Hey guys, Paul here with Stroker's Garage. So in the last video, I discussed some things about DraftSite. However, one thing I didn't do with you was build a part. Completely forgot to do that, but it worked out because the last video would have been a little long. So this will be a, a, the second part to the last video. All right, so let's get started. With DraftSite, again, very powerful tool. We're doing 2D images with it. I, I'm on my PC doing this. So we've got all kinds of options up here we can select from. So I just I recommend you go through them, see what does what, and just practice with it. So when you start out making parts, you can practice by grabbing a camera or your cell phone or a part out in the garage and measure it and, and just see if you can't replicate a 2D version of what you're looking at on this, just for practice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out using lines and circles, right? Because circles you could trim, lines you can make whatever angle and, and length you want. And, and you could just use those two with the trim feature and amongst other things to make your part. So we're gonna start out with a line. So hit L, execute, place it, and let's say we want it to be eight inches long. Cool. All right, so then we're gonna do our other line and let's do five inches. All right, cool. So we'll stop with that. So in the end of the last video, I, I discussed some of the, uh, a feature called offset. So let's try it out. So we'll type offset and hit the space bar for execute. And then we get some options on here. And, and it also asks for a distance. So let's, let's do a distance. So I wanna get this line over here. Well, I know this is eight inches in distance, so let's hit eight. And then we'll select what we wanna do. And then it says, hey, which side of the line do you want me to project it? And we wanna click over here. You can click anywhere on the left side and then it'll throw it over there. And we could do it again for the, uh, the eight inch line. So do offset. And then we know it's five inches. So we'll click here and then we'll click up here and there you go. So there's the start of our flange. So there's another feature called fillet and that'll round out edges for you. So we'll type fillet and then it, it asks for radius, right? In, uh, in, in amongst other things, what you, uh, what, what you want the radius of the fillet to be. So it's, it's part of a circle, right? So we'll do, we'll, we'll hit R for radius cause we want to specify and we'll do half inch. Cool. And then it says uh, specify your entities and then we'll specify the two entities and then it rounds out that edge. And then we'll hit the space bar again to repeat the command. And we'll just finish this out. All right, cool. So let's get into actually putting in the bolt holes, right? So for this, for this flange, we're gonna use circles, right? We don't have to worry about making threads or anything. We just know what the bolt hole size we want it to be, right? So we'll hit C for circle. And it, has, it has some options, but it wants to know the center point. So we did those fillets. So we took it from a 90 degree angle to having a half inch radius fillet. So that fillet's actually part of a circle. So that means we can find the center point of that circle. So what we could do is we can come up here and select the circle portion of the fillet, the rounded edge, and it'll drop out right here, the center point for it. So we'll use that to drop our circle. So we'll click, there's our circle. So we want these, bolt holes to be three eighths in diameter, right? So it starts out with radius, but if you see your options there down in the bottom left in blue, you hit D and then execute and it'll switch it over to diameter. And then we'll go ahead and put in 0.375 and then we'll hit execute and it'll create the circle. Cool. So at this point we can do that again or we can just copy. So we'll type copy and then we'll select it. And then we'll hit execute and it wants to know where we're going to copy from. We'll do the center and then we'll bring it over here. Find the center of that, that fillet and drop it. There you go. Now you could do that again for just selecting both of them and then moving one down. And it'll drop both down or we can do mirror. And it says select entities. Cool. And then it wants to know where to start the mirror from. And we'll do the midpoint of this line. And then we'll drag it to the left. See right there, we can move it around and then we'll drag it to the left and then we'll click. And then it wants to know if we want to delete it or not. It defaults to know if you just hit the space bar. And there you go. Cool. So the flange is starting to look good. All right, cool. Now we want to put the opening for the our hot gases to pass through, right? Because we're making a turbo flange. So what we'll do is we'll start off with, with something that I, it's what I like to do is I want to find the midpoint of everything. So I'll hit L. And then we'll go to the midpoint of this line and we'll come down to the other one. And that what's cool about that is it actually gives us the midpoint here. So we have that there. 
So now let's draw out the opening for the, the flange with an L and we'll start with a line. All right, cool. So we're, let's do like four inches. All right, and then let's do three inches. Cool, and then we'll finish this out. I'll use the intersection feature in there and come down and click. Cool, so we got a four by three and we can even verify that. We can come up to dimension to make sure that, hey, did I put that in correctly? Go to smart and then we can click here, come down, cool, we get four and then we can do it again. Let's try that again. Dimension, click here, there you go. Cool, so we know it's right. So we can delete those out, E for delete, awesome. Uh, so now we can actually put a line in the center here, draw it down, and now we've got our midpoint. So we'll hit M for move and execute. We'll select everything. And then we'll hit execute and it wants to know where to move it from and we'll select the center point here. And then we'll bring it over and drop it on the center point there or the midpoint. And then we'll delete those out, these lines, and there you go. Cool, so let's fill it, these guys. So we'll do fill it and let's do uh, radius, uh, we can do uh, 0.375 again, just random numbers, and then radius those out. And we'll just finish this off. Cool. All right, so looking pretty good here. Awesome. So one thing we need to do now before we can actually print this out on a scale of one to one and lay it on our material is we need to get the center points for our center punch on the circles, right? So there's two ways to do that. You can either dimension all the circles and it'll have it drop a center mark on it. I'll show you that here in a second. Or you could just come in, it's a little time consuming, but if you were pro and knew you were gonna do this, you would have made this circle just one of these and do this. And that's your center mark. And then you would have copied it over and mirrored it down. And you would have had all four done already, right? So let's go ahead and finish this out. A little too far. There we go. Actually, I'll do this one. I'll show you how to do that with the dimension tool. Cool. So you could have done that one as well. Not worried about doing the dimensions. Done these. And we'll do some of those right now. Right, we'll put this guy here. A little tedious, but it really makes finding those center punches easier. Cool. And then we'll do the same thing with the dimensions here. So you could have done the same thing on this, this fillet and then the same thing in this circle and printed it out and you could have made your part. You don't need any other dimensions because you could have just glued it down on the material and got to cutting, right? All right, but let's throw dimensions on there. So we come up to this dimension feature and I like to do everything in diameter. So click on diameter and then we can click on the circle edge there. And you saw how it popped the the crosshairs in here for the center. So that's what I was meaning from earlier. And so a half inch radius is one inch in diameter. So then we can repeat that. We'll click on here and we know that circle is three eighths in uh, diameter. And then we can do it again for this guy here, which was three eighths in radius, if you remember, which is uh, three quarters of an inch in diameter. Cool. And it dropped the crosshair there for center. All right. So, so those are done. Now let's go ahead and finish out the, the dimensions. We can do smart here. We can click, come up. Cool. Could do another one. So if you remember, so it was half inch radius. So half plus a half is an inch plus seven is eight. So that was our original dimensions. And then we don't have to do that one. And then we can come up here, click. There you go. And finish this out. Cool. So sweet, very good. But you know, sometimes I get asked, well, how do I, how do I get this guy centered? Well, you can dimension it again from this edge. Oop, try it again. And click and click. And there you go.
There it is. So an inch from this line and two inches from that line. So if you measured when you laid this out and you draw your, your mark your lines, you could do two inches here, another one here, and then put your straight edge here and scribe your line. Same thing there. And then you can find the where you're going to put your opening. But for me, I would just lay this on the material and, and just cut it all out. So there you go. That's it. That's how you make your, your, your part, your flange. Uh, hopefully you're following through with me and practice doing this. Uh, you can throw text on here and type out flange if you want. You can change the color of it. I mean, you can just, you can have this ready to go. Save it for future use for if you have to remake the part again later. It's a great, great, very powerful tool to get you started on your on your 2D drawings. So, all right, well, thanks for following along. Uh, again, if you want to get a hold of me, leave a comment. Please subscribe. You can also reach out to me on uh, at my email, which is strokersgarage at gmail.com. All right, thanks for watching, guys.